from somewhere. It doesn't just pop into existence from nothing. No, we don't know. Okay. Do you believe nothing exists? Wrong question. No, it's not. Does that nothing... question didn't follow on from what I said. Okay. Does nothing exist? Describe nothing. You don't know what's nothing? Describe nothing. Do you not know what it is? Describe nothing. It's like that exam paper. Is it I don't know or you know the answer that you don't want to tell me? Which one is it? It's neither. So you don't know the answer? No, you, you're all over the place. You, you just you just hear there and everywhere. What you're doing is you kind of... Andrew, why are you... All, I, don't know, I don't know why... Anything. I don't know why you seem, I don't know, insecure in a way. What is nothing? Okay. The reason I asked you that question is to understand whether you understood the term that is used. Nothing. Of course I understand it. So tell me then. And it's a nonsense term. Explain to me nothing what Nothing is a nonsense is. term. Yeah. So you're saying the dictionary, English dictionary has a term non nonsense in it? Give me that definition. Okay. You said it's nonsense based on what? No, I've asked you to give me that I will definition. give you because I have the answer. I'll give it to you. Right, but since I asked you first and you called it nonsense, I'm assuming you don't know what it is. Your line of reasoning is nonsense, but go on, define... No, no, you define, said, you said nothing, nothing is nonsense. You I'm, said the I'm, term is nothing. I'm nothing is nonsense. my position. Okay, since you don't know, now, I'll tell you it to you. define what nothing Actually, is. Actually, you haven't clarified your position, because you haven't told us what nothing is. No, I'm not going to. I'm clarifying... You're not my, going to. I'm clarifying my position. I'm asking you to why, define nothing. Why are you not going to answer that simple question? Because I'm asking you a more pertinent question. It's the same define, question. Define nothing. Well, how is it more pertinent when it's the same question? I'm still waiting. Well, what's the question about nothing? Yes. Yeah, it's easy to define. Exactly. Na and thing. So right. no plus thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay, I'll, I'll give you my definition. You tell me if you agree or disagree. Okay? Nothing is the absence of everything. Right. Absolute nothingness is the absence of everything. Sorry, wait, wait, wait. And I have a follow-up question. No, no, no. Before you give a follow-up question, do you agree or disagree with that definition? Well, until I give a follow-up question, okay, I go won't on. know. Go on. So, tell me what that is. I just told you. Absence of yes, everything. Yes. Expand that. Which part of that do give you not me, understand, give Andrew? more information. Andrew, which part of that do you not understand? Because it's not, there's not enough information for me to make a call. Okay. What do you understand based on my answer? Absence virtually, of everything. Vir virtually, virtually nothing. Because you haven't shown. <laughs> Absolute, because you haven't shown. That's what that, I'm saying. Virtually you nothing. You shown that Absolutely that, nothing. You haven't shown that that exists. Ah, so it doesn't exist. You haven't shown. By the way, I never said it exists. <laughs> you see, you Why, get, wait, wait. you're getting into this logical. No, no, no. You are, into this logical. I don't know if you are, if you realize, but you actually believe nothing exists. Am I right? No. I'm saying it doesn't exist. No, it's a concept. It's just a concept. It doesn't exist in reality. Absolute nothingness doesn't exist. Thank you. Now, now you can wipe that smirk off Thank your face you. because you're finally, the penny has dropped now. Hello. No problem. <laughs> Andrew, so now we have concluded that nothing doesn't exist. Do you agree? Carry on with your argument. No, no, please. We need to, in order for me to carry to the next stage, right. for I want the sake to... of him carrying on his argument, let's no, agree no, with it. Like no, it doesn't work like that. Well, if, then. Either you agree or disagree. Simple as that. You're not going to put me in a little corner because. That's too simplistic. Okay. Put him in a bigger corner, not little. No, no, wait, wait. Yeah. First thing is, I asked you it's the meaning. Andrew, let's let's be fair. Come on. Yeah. I asked you the meaning of nothing. You you were reluctant to answer that question. Then I gave you my answer, yes. and still still you seem yeah, to be. There's no good re going over what we've just no, no, done. No, no, no. Just carry on. We're but in order for us, research. in order for us to carry on, it's very important for me to understand whether you understood what I'm explaining. Right. Well. What you what you said was nonsense, Brett. Which part? Everything. Which part? Everything. Have you heard what the meaning of nothing is based on what I said? Did you understand what nothing yes. is based on what I said? Okay, what is nothing? According to you, the absence of everything. Okay, and which part of that is nonsense? Well, I'm waiting for you to carry on. No, you said it's nonsense, so qualify it. Or is it just a claim? Okay, it's, it's not nonsense, now carry on. Good. Right. So now you have understood what nothing is? Does it exist? <laughs> no one's laughing. Do you want to ask the question again? Why? You have a problem hearing? <laughs> How can nothing exist? Then it will be something. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The penny dropped. Yeah. Wonderful. So, yeah, so carry Good. On. Now that we know that nothing doesn't exist, let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Right. Can the universe come from nothing? Nobody says it does. Again, this is this is taking you it's to this question. point. All this bullshit is taking you to this point that some people do say because like some people say the universe yeah, comes yeah, from yeah. nothing. Nobody says that. Andrew, don't say nobody. Have you yes. questioned everyone in the world? 
Have you heard of Prophet Lawrence Muhammad Cross? Cross? Lawrence Cross. Yes, I know Lawrence yes. Cross. He said, right. yes. what did he write? Come here, Mansour, come yes. here. Yes. He wrote, he wrote, what's the title of Actually, I need to go pray a yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote a book called A Universe from Nothing. Do you stop, know why stop. he used that no, title? No, no, do you want to put this on it? Do you know why he used that title? Before you do that. It was to get people oh, to wait. actually look into no, his book wait, wait. and to see that nothing in his term was not nothing. Okay. So it's a clickbait. You know that? Yes, it's but, but Mansur, yeah. no need to go there. He already has yeah. said okay. it cannot come yes, from nothing. So let's go to the next. So now we've got some yeah. nuance okay. there. Okay. Yeah. So, so he knows that it's not okay. nothing because it's quantum flux okay. within, yeah. right? Within the universe. It doesn't require a universe, right? Did That's he explain? Did he explain in his book why he wrote this title? Yes, and I mean I've not got his book on me. Yeah, what did he say? I can come back and we can go through his book if you want to. Yeah, yeah, I have the book. I, I I've read it myself too. Good. good. Yeah. So has he has he explained? Where's he's going to he's going for a quick prayer break because it's our prayers are fixed time. He's going to come in about five ten minutes, not not, not not too long. So the universe obviously then, then cannot come from nothing. So according to oh, Professor Cross and according to yourself, uh, you could be another professor. I, I I don't know. I didn't ask. Has the universe always been there? The present scientific consensus is that it's been around for about 14 billion years. Okay. So I'm not I'm not fixed on an absolutist position. As a scientist, what does it mean? It's been there 14 point something billion years. I'm not I'm not I'm not Lawrence Krauss. Now, what does it mean? You you, you talked about the current scientific consensus. What As does we it mean? understand it, it starts off at a finite point and it expands over 14 You have to you have to go with you slowly. When you say something. Age is 14.7. Well, well, yeah, well, no, no, no. I want to make sure you're not talking nonsense. Like you are saying it's nonsense. I want to make sure you're not talking nonsense. Yeah. So when you say something's I'm age is. No, yeah. the, no, 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 no. I want to make sure scientists are not talking nonsense. Yeah. So when you said the age of the universe is 14.7 billion years old, so if you go back, is that when. When you say it started, it started, right? You said it started. What scientists will say, and this is me as a non-physicist trying to impart this information. But don't worry, we have a physicist here, right in front of us. Is that's the point in which the, the, the time and space continuum that we're in now is thought to have started from a very small point. Time started what, from that point. What we know of before then, mm. we don't know anything. Which is what I was saying to your colleague before. Okay. That we don't. So time started that from that know. point, right? No, the time as we understand it in this continuum started then. So basically, time existed before that. You have, you've heard of, I'm sure you've heard of the theory, and there's not a lot of evidence for it, but it's a logical theory of the multiverse. I, 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 have, I have heard about it, but what I want to know, eternal. understand from you, did time exist before the Big Bang when things started? I'm not of going our to universe. say yes because I don't know. I'm just being honest. What do you think? What's time? It's, it's irrelevant what I think. No, I'm what's not, time? I'm, to can, you? I, can you say something because you keep interrupting me? I'm, I don't have any emotional attachment to, to my beliefs. Right? You do hold beliefs, right? I do okay. hold beliefs, okay. but I'm a scientist, so if, those, if the What's evidence shows thing? that I need to change my beliefs, mm. then I will change my beliefs based on the evidence. That doesn't lead me to an absolutist position, mm. right? It leads me to hold that this is what the evidence shows, yeah. And that leaves it open for new evidence to come in and either firm up what we already believe and build on that to make it more likely that that's the way it is. Or actually, no, this overthrows what we thought before because there is now new evidence that we hadn't even considered before and therefore we have to take a different direction. That's the scientific process yeah. you're describing, yeah, right? That's, and so that's, right. What, that's my belief process. Sure. What do you understand by time as a scientist? You said you're a scientist. What, what field is your specialty in? Really, biology. Fine, more, more fine. Physics. Biology still so has to deal with is, time. Is continuation. Uh, well, you, you, you're going somewhere with this, so I'll let you go somewhere. Anyway. No, I want to know what you understand by time. Well, I'd like to know what time it is now, actually. It's 17.40. 17.40, right. I've got to go at 6. Cause got to okay, got 20 minutes. Yeah. Right, so time is... Time. Is that a measurement of something? Yeah, measurement of... Of what? As a biologist, you deal with measurements, many measurements. Yeah. So what's time measurement of? 
If I say climate emergency number of change, would you agree or disagree? Of what? Change. Um, Transformations. No, not really. Okay, so what is the time measurement of? Come on, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering where he's going. I'm trying to it's think. It's not about where he's going. The relationship between the Earth and the Sun. <laughs> that was a bit simplistic. <laughs> what time is? <laughs> so if there was no t Sun and the Earth, there wouldn't be no time? Correct. Wrong. What time is? No, no there would. There would, there would be not be time. Time yes. is a construct by humans. Yeah, yes. where we measure the relationship between the Sun and the Earth. That's yeah. exactly what time is. No. It doesn't exist outside. No, well, there. no it does. It How? exists in the. Because 14 billion years ago, the, the Earth didn't years, exist. 14 billion years ago well, doesn't make any sense exist. in that context at all. That doesn't make any sense. Go and, go and speak to physicists. I'm not a physicist. Say 14 billion right, years right. before let's, the existence of Because I'm going to... Let's go yeah, yeah, with yeah. So, so why do you not agree that time is actually a measurement of change? So when, for example, now and 20 minutes later, the change will have happened. There will be lots of change happening. Change has happened and we've gone outside those changes. Now they have gone bygone, they have passed. Because you were, and we live, you're presenting that, it's as though... You're trying to narrowly put time into just this change time is, and that's it, and it's more than that. It's not more, I mean, what do you understand? Because that then will help us understand about our universe, whether our universe was always there or not. So, since nothingness doesn't exist in, in reality, and something exists now, can do we get you... On, can we get on to God? <laughs> I'm waiting to get yes, on to God. Yeah, yeah, what, what, is, what, what is God? What is God? I don't know. You, you're you're believing in God. In God. No, 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 no. I'm waiting so, for you so that, to, that's, to that's why, that's why, that's why we need to go through a scientific process of no, understanding no, 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 the reality. No, 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 because, because that's the only thing that works with a scientist, right? Are you a philosopher or a scientist, or both? Well, science is natural philosophy, isn't it? But are you actually a trained philosopher? No, I'm a scientist. Good, so a scientist. Yeah. So what will work best with you in terms of interacting with you will be science, right. the scientific processes. And that's how we will do. So I am going to go no, through a process... No, what would work best is you simply to tell me what you believe and why. That doesn't work with the scientists. It does scientists, work with the scientists accept evidence, yes. not common sense. Yes. But evidence is, is common sense. It's like, this is the evidence and common sense says that you accept it. Isn't there, isn't there many things in science that goes against common sense? Isn't there many things in science that goes against common sense? Is what, sorry? Aren't there many things in science that goes against common sense? The science is a methodology. And the methodology is based I am on, saying, on common aren't sense. Aren't there many things that we accept due to science, but that really goes in, against common sense? I can give you examples. Go on then, give me an example. Do you know of any? You said you could give me an example. I said, please give me an example. Do you know of any as a scientist? I Do you know of any? I don't think of any at the moment. So Do you know of any? You, I'll yeah, let yeah, you okay. Okay. Yeah, quantum yeah, I'll meaning you. on a, on other things. Yeah. Okay, let, let's, let's, let's understand some. Do you want to give? Okay. So we, 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 we have a physicist among us, which is very good, as a scientist, biologist, and a physicist. Yeah. So Do before, you want to explain? Before, before going to uh, understand what common sense is, so common sense is built, built uh, on the view we usually uh, observe on common ground or observe in the common people. Uh, common people's side. Now, no, no. That's what common sense is. Common sense is that. Yeah. So now, you have something, if I throw a ball on a wall, and it, uh, then it will just reflect back. Do it will bounce that? back, right? Yeah. Normally. Yeah, normally. So this is our common sense. We say that if there is a hurdle or barrier, and if we throw something, our common sense tells that it will be reflected back or bounced back. Under certain conditions. Yeah. Uh, under some certain conditions. Yeah. Yeah. If this, if this is hard and Solid. Yeah, yeah there has know. to be gravity and air resistance. And if you throw something in a yeah, black hole, what we, happens? We are talking about common people, so we are, we are living in art, so it is all black and the art is not. So it is it's common sense. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm common not sense. interested in discussing we are not, science. We are talking about common I'm people, we are not talking about what you specific situations. So now, <laughs> now, 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 give me some examples. Can I ask you a simple question? Now, in quantum reality, we have particles which Everything is nonsense, and then you are claiming that everything is nonsense. 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 Everything
Okay. Let me let me ask um, you. Wait, 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 let me ask you a question. Let me ask what you a question. is the question wait, 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 Okay. What is the question you want? It's a very simple question. Well, let's hope so. According to a lot of most religious people, Muslims and Jews and Christians, they believe that there is something which we call God, which is some kind of higher intelligence, right? We don't exactly what it is, right? But it's an intelligence. It's creative force, right? And it's the creative force behind everything in the universe. You, me, ants, the atoms, the trees. Yeah. This is a creative force. Okay. Whatever that means. Now, according to according to my understanding of a religious Muslim, yeah, you believe the same creative force that made this amazing, crazy universe also told some words to the to the mind of a guy called Muhammad, may bless be him, where peace, whatever you say, yeah, and that he his these words were then written down in this book called the Quran, and what we're basically saying is that the Quran, yes, is from the same creative space mind as the universe. That's otherwise the the, the, the God, Allah, right. The best work he could think of, yeah, or she could think of, to come and deliver to humanity in Arabic was the Quran, right? Now, when I read the Quran, right, I think I look at the universe, which is amazing. I look at the Quran, I'm like, meh. You know, you could do better. I could do better. He could write a better book than that. It hasn't had an update for 1,400 years. It's causing a lot of mess in this planet because lots of people who've been in the Quran, like a significant number of them in different countries, are committing vile acts of, of disgusting violence and saying Allahu Akbar. So, how do you reconcile your belief that the Quran is the greatest work of the greatest mind, God? Yeah, and yet the results. And no disrespect to, to Muslims, I, when I read it, I find it a diabolical creation compared to the universe. Okay. That's my question. Very good question. How many mistakes and errors did you make in that question? <laughs> <laughs> did you count? Or have you lo lost counts? Don't be arrogant and rude. No, 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 no. I I'm making... this all the time. Hang on. Uh, 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 excuse me. Excuse me. Being obnoxious. I'm uh, asking you a question. I am going faith, to answer. And you're being obnoxious and rude. Yeah. Let, you're okay. And you're let supposed me, to be a good let Muslim. Me, let me, let me help you with that. Oh, how do you know it's not in good faith? Let me, let me. What does good faith even mean to you? Let me. Tell me. How long have I known you for in this park? I have no idea how long you've known me in this park. Only today? No, you've seen me around before. Many years. Have you ever answered a question right. in your life? Um, I am about to answer if you're going to listen. You've got, Go on, you've got 10 more minutes okay. maybe, perhaps. So the idea that you have, the construct in your question, the assumption, the Quran is the greatest book, greatest work of God, false. Quran is the communication, the final communication from God. Yeah, from our creator, the final. It's not just his greatest. In fact, all of these things that you see, this is the creation of God. Okay. That's Joseph Smith, actually. Yeah, go on, okay. go on. Right. So, the thing that you've read the Quran, no, you haven't read the Quran. You've read translations, perhaps in the languages that you know of, translations, and, and, and you misunderstood those translations, what it has to say. And based on the actions of certain ignorant, emotional individuals, the fringe group, you then say, ah, oh, this is what the Quran say, and I can match one with the other, and that's why Quran is a diabolical, this book and that book, and you don't agree with. And, 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 and you said, it's open to interpretation. And, and you said, there's never been no updates for 1400 and, years. And you said, you can write a better book. Guess what? The Quran is such a book that you cannot even construct or compose it's crass, it. It's ridiculous. Um, it's a terrible, um, book. terrible book. It's awful. That's the problem. It's That's the problem. Your violent, your, 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 your value judgment. Look at it. Look at what he's saying. Your okay. value judgment of a book comes yeah. from your comes total from reading a translation comes from, of it. Yeah, your comes from comes what? You know, from comes a better understanding of the world than Muhammad could ever have had in Excuse his time. Excuse me. Let me give you. That's where it okay. comes from. The Quran says. You, you, I, are, I want, you have more knowledge than I, you can I, have can more I, can I reply? Than ever can I reply rather than being interrupted? The Quran says to give you an English translation of the meaning. Have the unbelievers. Ah, oh, that's like two. Have they not known that the heavens and the earth was joined together as one piece? And God parted it asunder and brought every living thing from water. Would they then not believe? Now, let's okay. deal with that. Go read all the one. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it says that in the Torah, which did, I learned did, as a kid. Did, did, <laughs> did, did, <laughs> is that information nonsense it or something Quran significant? It says lots of things, including that information unbelievers should be, should be punished. Nonsense. The, the information about the origin of the heavens and the earth being united in one piece. Nothing and then, well, excuse me, you're a biologist, right? What usable technology do you get out of that um, information? One second. You one don't get anything out One of that moment. I'm gonna, it's vacuous nonsense. Why don't you listen to the example first? So the Quran says that. So I would like, I would like you to tell me... When the Quran says this, the origin of the heavens and the earth, all the planetary 
bodies, the stars, the galaxies, the Earth, everything was actually in a... Go study joy. astronomy. Um, Go to a university. Excuse I understand me. understand the accretion. You're not letting me... You're not letting me even address the question. What is your, what is your point? Words. My question to you My question, my question to you is, how do you explain the knowledge of the common origin of our cosmos, which we have now confirmed through the redshift? I have read the Quran. I know. I know what nonsense it says. One second. One second. Have we confirmed that our universe? Confirmed anything in the Quran? You're not. You're not, you're not, you're not listening, are you? You're filming this. You're not, you're not watching it. And they're like, you're not, you're not, come on, answer the question. You're not listening, are you? Here, here is my point. He's asking stupid questions. Here's my point. Yeah, I know. So, in your valuable five minutes, here's something then. I am saying, do we know now, using our scientific tools and technology, that the Earth, the solar system, the Milky Way, the galaxies, all of them, were actually you are, you're in about one yes. point, <laughs> united at one point. Do we know that? Yes, yes we do. Yeah, well, we know that the universe started at the Big Bang, yeah. We do now know, right? We, we have, we have control. That. It's a theory. Well, it's a theory. Oh, now it's yeah, become no, a theory. Yes. <laughs> it's the best explanation that we have based on the evidence that we have Correct. at the moment. Correct. Yeah. Now, yeah. since this but is the Quran our... doesn't say that. You Hang need to Hang on. really disrespectfully um, misinterpret the Quran for it to even approach saying anything okay. like that. What so. did I misinterpret in the translation that I gave of a well, Quranic guys, book? Why would, Allah, why would Allah give a book in Arabic so, to a bunch of desert people um, 1,500 listen, years ago? So when the Quran said that. Are you, are, you, are you listening? Hang on. What's the no, idea here? I'm are you listening? Now. I've got, I yeah. want to go and see Bob. Um, <laughs> are you really a biologist? <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I'm I doubt on. very much so. It doesn't <laughs> reflect your <laughs> level of intelligence uh, having a discussion. We go with Adam. Yeah, it's okay. not ad hominem. Right, guys, because, I, I, because, I, I, because you're not going to discussion. I'll put a little statement on the cameras here to you and every Muslim and Palestinian lover over here, right? Yeah. As a Zionist, right? I just want to say, yeah. Okay. Okay, see you later. No, no, no. We're not giving you a free time. Human beings who are suffering. The yeah. most people have conditions in how, Gaza. How okay. you so now we don't want to okay. about people who don't understand people. basic things of our time and, and they claim that the <laughs> no one's going to listen to him. I've got the mic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, don't go yet. I have I have things to say. Let him finish. Someone's on. Well, I'm, sorry. I'm still live recording. I'll speak to you later, inshallah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does he not realize no one's hearing him because I've got the mic? This is the level of intelligence these people have. This, 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 this has claimed that time, definition of time, yeah. uh, related to it, uh, uh, existence of sun and earth. And, yes. and how is so, stupid this and they, they, they these, are claiming that they are from scientific look, background. Look at that. This these is, people claim to be yeah. intelligent, scientists. Definition of time, time is related only to, for him to the earth and the sun. When I said, what if the earth and the sun wasn't there, would there be no time? <laughs> and he doesn't realize his voice is not going to be picked up. Because I have moved away from him and the mic is on me. And he keeps talking. So all the people who are just listening to his mouth movement, he wasn't talking much sense anyway. Okay? So to just to sum up and so on, we, went, we are trying to have a discussion with someone who claims to be a scientist and biologist specifically to understand about the world and whether there's a creator of the world or not. So I gave an example so he can relate to about how, because this gentleman asked a question in the middle. I mean, how is this Quran a book from the, he doesn't accept the Quran anything any significant for humanity? I give an example of a verse from the Quran translated in English, in the language that both of them are able to understand, I hope, about the common origin of the universe and about life coming from source from water. He heard that and still he, it didn't click on him. Like, how can a book? 1,000. 500 years almost ago say such a thing that we recently in his lifetime he came to know and confirm in his lifetime his grandfathers didn't know that they weren't sure that this was the origin of our universe and yet knowing this information in his lifetime 
he is so against this book. This is not about someone being open-minded and having an intellectual scientific rigor and understanding reality. This is close-mindedness. This is bigotry. This is hatred of Islam. This is hatred of the book that God has sent. It is anti-religion. It is anti-Islam, Islamophobia, if you want to call all of this. It is nothing to do with love of reality, love of Internet science knowledge. and knowledge and acquiring the truth. It's all a smokescreen. So whenever we want to have a discussion with them, look at the level of their intelligence. Yeah, he's gone. I mean, should we next time check their IQ level, every atheist that comes and see, and, you know, because... No, no, I think the discussion tells us the IQ level. <laughs> he, was claiming, he was claiming that everything you, you, you were saying... We, we, we let the people that. judge. Yeah, <laughs> but it's to spare the people from losing their brain cells. I mean, I often hear from the comments, people are saying, I lost a lot of the brain cells today. We want to spare that. We, perhaps you're going to have some you know, IQ question and say, okay, if you really think you're smart, okay, let's prove it. Let's, let's, let's prove it. And then if you're up to a certain level, maybe you know, 94, 95, uh, maybe, maybe about 97, then we can talk. Um, otherwise, there's no point talking with someone who's going to be like someone who hasn't got a clue about anything. So he, he didn't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't know the meaning of nothing, then... Yeah, so the reason why we bring out nothing, because nothingness, which doesn't really exist in reality, because it's an absence of everything, it cannot make anything. So could it make the universe, which is there? The answer is, of course, no. So they have no other option to accept that the universe wasn't made by nothing. So either it was made by something, or it was always there. That's the two options. If it's always there, that they know is problematic, and they can't really justify that position. What's, what's left? Something else, someone else made it. Well, who or what that could be, they know that's the end of their game they're playing. It is going to be a originator, a creator, a maker of this universe. Who has will, self-consciousness or self-awareness, who has power and ability, who has knowledge and wisdom, these things will be required to make this universe. And what are these characteristics? The attributes of a creator. So they know already the moment they start talking about the world is the moment they accept that there's a creator. But they don't want to go through this process. And that's why we want to ask them, we question them, are you really a biologist? Because if you're really a biologist, you would have known this design already. But you give this design to something that doesn't even exist, that doesn't have a brain, that doesn't have any neurons. Is it not? Oh, evolution designed it. Guess what? Evolution is not a conscious entity. It doesn't have brains. Does it have neurons? Does it have self-awareness? It doesn't even know it exists. And yet they say it designed it. Imagine you have a guy called evolution and he hasn't studied science, electronics, physics, or maths, and you've given him all these pieces of parts of a mobile phone and you say go and make it evolution says yeah i don't know anything i haven't got any knowledge anyway um and he makes an iphone would he be able to make an iphone this guy called evolution <laughs> what's worse they don't believe evolution is a guy or a girl they believe evolution is a process only with no intelligence and yet, it made all these beautiful designs in the living organisms. The irony of intelligent bankruptcy. So may Allah, our creator of the universe, guide us and start guiding us through our common sense first. Let people have the common sense come back first. Then, through the use of common sense and the intellect, the aql, the faculty of reason and rationality, starts playing and let people then use that to come to the realization of the truth. And the truth is, as you will realize, only in the unadulterated form or reality, what we call Islam, the final message from the Creator, with the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, with the final book, the Quran. This is where you will find the truth, nowhere else. Everywhere else, there will be the convoluted version of truth mixed with falsehood. Either man-made, or divinely truth that was sent, but mixed up with falsehood, and that's why people are in their confusions. So we invite you to become Muslims. Yes, 
We would like you to become Muslims for what? So that you save yourself from the punishment of hellfire. And it's no joke. You and I will die one day. Do you think I'm going to live forever? Do you think you're going to live forever? You watching, do you think you're going to live forever? You're not going to live forever. You're going to die one day. And that's the reality. What's going to happen to you once you die? Do you even have a clue? You think that's it? No purpose? Even your shoe had a purpose. Your shoe had a purpose. And you think you have no purpose? The way sophisticated human beings have been designed. And yet, you don't think you have a purpose in life and you really think you fulfilled your purpose by being happy? That wasn't the purpose. Your purpose was to fulfill the purpose that was set by God to worship Him, to be grateful to Him, to give Him the right that is due, to acknowledge that He's your Creator and obey Him and follow Him. But you haven't done so. If you don't do that, then do you think you will be saved in the hellfire? From the hellfire in the hereafter? Because there is going to be a hereafter. This life is not going to be the end of everything. And you know that very well. Because when was the last time you said, Ah, oh, I want this to last forever. Where did you get this concept from? You are happy and you said, I want it to last forever. I want to be in love forever. Yes, there will be forever life. But not in this one. It will be in the hereafter. But it will be either in a place of eternal torment, suffering, pain, punishment, or you can choose to go to another place which is forever, in a place of tranquility, peace, contentment, joy, happiness, felicity. You can choose which places you want to go to today. Accepting Islam will save you from the hellfire. If you die in a state of disbelief, you've made yourself to be recipient of that punishment. You cannot have an excuse because you are watching us, you are listening to us and you know the message of Islam is to surrender and submit yourself and to worship that one and one God, one and one God only and alone without any partners being ascribed and live your life accordingly. You heard the message. You cannot have an excuse in the hereafter saying, I didn't know. Oh, it was my forefathers that did it. It was my parents. It was my society. I was misled by Satan. I was misled by rock and roll, drugs, women. That will not be an excuse because God is constantly guiding you, telling you, giving you guidance. Remember last time? It clicked on you. You were doing something wrong and you realized that wasn't the right thing to do. That was the guidance from God. Do you remember that? Yes, exactly that. You knew that you have, you should have done that. But you still said, ah, no, no, no. You brushed it off. You're saying, no, no, no. I'm going to carry on my stealing, my lying, my oppression, my killing, my raping, my looting, and all these things that people constantly do in this life. All these vices that you do. But God constantly reminds you, even internally to yourself, because you have what we call the fitra, the internal disposition to know God, to even know some of the basic elements of right and wrong. You know lying is wrong. And you know that to lie, you have to really do something to your prefrontal cortex and then lie. Speaking the truth is easy. Lying is not. You have to manipulate your functionality of your neurons and your brain cells to lie. And yet you lie. Because you become habitually so used to it. So what we're saying is, don't go with the flow because most of the people are on the wrong path because they're not using their echo, their intellect and they're not following the prophets and messengers. When is the last time you picked up a copy of the Quran? Those who don't believe in any religion. But you read Harry Potter. You watch the movies and the likes. The Quran is believed and followed by one quarter of the world population. And you didn't even bother thinking, why do they do that? Why do one quarter of the world population read this book and follow this book, considering it, believing it to be a revelation? One quarter, billions of people. You didn't even bother examining this book. Even common sense tells you 
what is in that book that one in four people accept it and you think you're smarter than them you're smarter than a billion people well maybe you are but where is your level of intelligence and smartness if i want to use it by not even reading this book if you're smart you should have read that book the two gentlemen that we talked about earlier on did they even read it with a sense of understanding what it said when the quran said be kind to your parents they would say who oh, disagree do you know why they disagree because they don't like their parents they want to put their parents in a old sleeping home because they're a burden on them when they got married we don't want to know you maybe i will send a christmas card or a you know mother's day card or whatever that's that's it but they know when the quran says these things it is the deep truth it is the sad truth for them when the quran says be a firm witness even if it goes against you against your family your kith and kin they know you cannot have anything more just than that and they say our oh, quran is all about this diabolical this book that book they know the message but they reject it knowing the truth in it so the people who will go in hellfire it's not every one of you by the way if you become arrogant and stubborn and reject the truth then you will be justifiable to go to hellfire that's the one way ticket don't be arrogant don't be stubborn and don't have that pride that you are your own creator your own god so this is our message of islam to you in a simple nutshell that islam is being free from the slavery of the creation slave being free from the slavery of worshiping your boss your country your football star your you know film star whatever it might be but removing from that shackles of enslavement and freeing from all of this and submit and surrender to the will of your creator and be grateful to him that is islam and that is what we are inviting to so this is what we are going to leave you with i'm going to ask my brothers to you know add something to to this inshallah so that you can really start thinking now before it's too late alhamdulillah i think we should always be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with this deen and that's the reason we say alhamdulillah ala ni'matil islam don't take it as something that has been given to you because you're born into it or you adopted it or something so don't take it for granted so the message to add to that is not only keep the message to yourself but to spread it the reason we want to spread the message is because we want everyone to have what we have we want to share the, the good news of islam and to have eternal bliss for everyone that is what we want to do but obviously there will be many people who will reject the clear message of the Quran the clear message that the prophet is the one intended and they will be the ones responsible for their own detrimental uh, you know eternal damnation no one other no one else should be responsible for that other than obviously the shaitan and themselves it's because on that day when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know so death is certain for all of us regardless of your belief or disbelief but when on the day of judgment when the people will be gathered and when you're standing in front of Allah in front of the almighty God what are you going to say for the reason that you rejected deliberately the worship to obey the will of the almighty in this world because remember this world is not going to last you are not going to last both are going to come to an end so what is certain is the life after death is certain and the question is what have you done to prepare for that eternal life you have done a lot to prepare for your life in this world to prepare for your children to prepare for your family but the question that should come to your mind is what have you done in preparation for the real life i say real life is because this life is temporary but the real life is the one that comes after you die which is going to be eternal so please ask yourself this question if you haven't prepared for it then what are you going to answer on the day of judgment when allah asks you what have you done 
How have you spent your money, your wealth, your health, and the life that God has blessed you with in this world? So make sure you have an answer to that. Because if you don't, then be prepared for the eternal damnation. And the only one accountable for that on the day of judgment will be yourself. Even the shaitan will distance himself from you. On the day of judgment, he will tell you that, you know, I didn't force you. I did not impose anything on you. Yes, I'm a, if I actually misled you, you still did it willingly. You were not imposed. You were not forced to do so. So even the shaitan who has been your companion in this world, showing you ways, every way possible, how he can dis disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like that man we were speaking to earlier. You know, they go and analyze everything about this world. But when it comes to logic, when it comes to rationality, they let go of it when it comes to their own self about their, their own existence, their own creation. They don't want to know that they think all of this just popped into existence. That matter and molecules all of a sudden had life in it. Yeah? By the process of evolution or whatever, whatever they want to call it. They always mistake the process, the mechanism with the agent. They don't, they think it's the same thing. It's not. So this is common sense. Come to the understanding that all of this existence didn't just pop into existence one day. It has a cause and the cause is none other than almighty God who is the supernatural being if you want to call it intelligent designer if you want to call it but this God Almighty or as the Muslims call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the cause of all of this existence and he is the one who is going to hold you and me accountable on that day so make sure you have a response on that day so Jazakallah Khairan I want to come here brother yeah. Sarwar and um, please add something especially yeah, being a physicist yourself can stay yeah, here yeah. okay so, yeah so uh, I, I want to uh, add like this so uh, whatever we agree about knowing something or deciding something we have the beautiful gift of intellect so we have to use this intellect to decide our uh, understanding our reality and our future our purpose kind of thing our dignity and what brings us into our real true self and real identity if we attach ourselves towards creation or temporary things and run after that or run for that then we are going to be perished with that perishable things now we have to understand and be little bit of sensible in the sense that if we care about our dignity whatever we have uh, obtained what if we care about our self-respect if we care about our intellect then we should not run after or go after something that will destroy those things. Rather, we should look for, a uh, search for the source of this dignity, source of this honor as a human. You know? And that is coming from, and these things are coming from the source, which we say that the originator, creator, sustainer of this world, the most merciful, the most high, the most perfect. You know, so now, if we follow him, then we can use our will responsibly and a dignified way that will keep our dignity intact in this life and after this life. In a dignified environment that is called Jannah. And if we do not care about this dignity which has been given to us, these capabilities, and use, we do not use this res responsibly, and we destroy ourselves or destroy these things irresponsibly, then we are going to be humiliated in this life, suffer, we will face suffering of different kind, worshipping and binding of different kind that will make your life hell mentally or physically and in this life and also after that life. So we will not, will not have any kind of justification that we have been given this result of humiliation rather than of giving the dignified environment or dignified life. Whatever we have been given, we should appreciate that and care about that. And if we do that, then this reward will come to us.